Hello everyone, this is Darth Nova here. For preparation of reviewing the Clone Saga, I want to go back and review the original. Because, you know, without, without this, I can't review the others. And I figured, at least for me, I can't review the 1990s Clone Saga without reviewing the 70s Clone Saga. Yes, there was two. I, I believe there's another... There was a... Another Clone Saga with Ultimate Spider-Man, and I think there's the Clones Conspiracy. I don't know what I mean, if I might, I might not re I might review those. I might not. I don't know. But I figured why not have a, a rather than because I'm going to eventually be reviewing reviewing a Star Wars comic series, and why not just practice reviewing a whole series by reviewing the Clone Saga? So I'm gonna start from the beginning. This is the original Clone Saga. This is not that hard to find, though a good chunk of this, you know, you know, isn't the Clone Saga itself. It's stories that take place after the Clone Saga, but I do feel like they're still worth reading. Now, what, what do I think of the Clone Saga? At least the '70s one. I felt it was really good. It, it really was. You know. The Jackal was a really is a really interesting character. I don't know if he's used now in the comics, but the clone of, of, of Gwen Stacy, I felt like, was a great way to, you know, shake things up. Because this is this is in the Bronze Age of comics, where for which I, you know, stories were much darker in tone than they were, you know, in the Silver Age, and. Cloning was some, a concept that, you know, pe which of course was proven later that it's impossible to make a clone. So they did a retcon, which is a story featured later in this volume that the woman that was Gwen Stacy was not really a clone of Gwen Stacy. It was another woman using her DNA. Anyway, this arc is not as convoluted as I am explaining it. I think it's very entertaining. The artwork is good. Um, even though there are some, you know, villains, you know, that isn't the Jackal featured in here, but this is 1970s artwork. I think it's timeless. I think that the penciling is really good. There's some stories revolved around, you know, Mysterio and other characters. Of course, the, where the actual Clone Saga starts is here. Because you know they 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 can't just it be this will be a bare bones if they just you know released an omnibus that that didn't really have much even though there's hints about a a clone of Gwen Stacy earlier this is the official start of the clone saga and it'd be interesting to talk to someone who actually read this story arc in the seventies you know. I mean, it was a good way to trick readers into believing that a character that, that that was killed years prior came back. Of course, we all know by the end, this is the end of the issue, that Gwen was dead. But but to, to bring her back, it seemed to, because, you know, comic books have the tendency, at least now, you know, bring back characters shortly after they die. But back then, deaths actually had weight. Of course... You know, this fucks with Peter psychologically, which, yeah, if your ex-girl, if you're someone you love died and she suddenly showed up and you had no idea who she is, Yuki kind of fucked up too. But I think the, the part that stands out the most for me in the Clone Saga is the very end of it, which you learn who the person, the mastermind behind the Clone Saga, who was the person that was in charge, who the Jackal is, and you... And it's a really good twist. I don't really want to spoil the twist, so I'm not going to tell you. But there's hints throughout the entire arc of who the Jackal is. But the very end of this arc, there's this. This is probably the best part of it. Because there's two Spider-Mans, you have no idea who it is, and at the time... 
The ending was ambiguous. It was, it was unknown which Spider-Man survived. Because they didn't outright state who survived, really, because they looked the same. You couldn't, you couldn't tell who it was. Of course, at this point, Ben Riley didn't even have a name. He was just called the clone. Um, both of them thought they were the real Spider-Man, and the Jackal dies along with the clone. Or was it the clone? There was an issue which which followed it, which 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 deals with the aftermath and you know Peter Parker questioning who he is. Is he really the real Spider-Man? Is he real? And he asks us for a for a for a test to prove if he is. What what made this great, in my opinion, is unlike now, where you know they just they you know just reboot constantly or just do one of it after another. This, the ending, which I'm going to sh you know, show you here, you know, he didn't bother reading the results, which this opened an opportunity for stories later down the road. And honestly, this is one thing I really loved about Marvel back then. You know, they they left an opening for more stories. They didn't simply, like, shoehorn a bunch of stupid shit, you know, like they do now. And this, you know, was a great catalyst for the following saga, which is controversial amongst many fans of Spider-Man. There's those who loathe this arc or those who, who love it. And next time I talk about the, you know, Spider-Man, I'm going to dive myself into the clone saga which this is the first of a, of 11 collections and holy shit it's going to be a long time before i actually get through it all so this is star synovia over and out have a great day everyone and peace